Hey, what's going on there, YouTube? This is SCL0320, part of JVS. Just want to give you all a short disclaimer. Um, my computer is dead. Uh, <laughs> my MacBook of what, 2009, uh, it is kaput. I can't do any more editing on it, so this green screen, y'all not going to see any edits on this green screen. Anything as far as filters, or transitions, and titles, it's not available to me. All I can do is as is, do the best I can, and upload it. And that's want to let y'all know that. <laughs> um, but I do want to let y'all know that I did see an amazing movie. Uh, it really caught me by surprise. Um, it was recommended to me by a lot of different people, including Jarrell's Alexandria. And uh, I saw on Rotten Tomatoes that gave me, I don't trust Rotten right, right Tomatoes. As y'all heard before when I talked about Fantastic Four, I don't, uh, anyway. Getting into it, I'm talking about the movie The Gift. This movie was uh, directed by uh, Joel Edgerton. And I actually was a fan of him of War. That was the first time I actually really saw him. I mean, I know um, 30 Seconds, uh, what was it? Uh, Joe Doc 30, um, The Great Gatsby. He's going to be in the new Black Mass starring Benedict Cumberbatch and, um, uh, shoot, how can I forget his name? Johnny Depp. Um, and I mean, he's an awesome actor. But this movie and his, I don't know if this is director or debut. But it makes up for anything that y'all discredited him in with the last movie with uh, Moses because he does an amazing job acting this, directing this, and the story is amazing. Alright, I'm going to just go ahead and say that from the jump. The story is freaking nuts. It's, it's, it's so good and so warped that I instantly thought back to last year's Gone Girl because when I looked at Ben Affleck's character and I looked at the whole process of what was going on and I didn't even read the book but I knew, I was like, man, this is just off, you know? And when you see the previews for this, the previews are not, in my opinion, put out that well. It doesn't catch your interest. And then you got Jason Bateman in this and you're like, okay, this, this, this is going to be fluff. This is going to be just a general horror movie. It's going to be kind of disturbing. You know, I love Disturbia. It's not like that at all. You have no freaking clue what this movie is about and I loved it. And uh, my friend that was with me, and he was just like, man, I'm disturbed. You know, and by the end of it, you really do feel that. But anyway, let me go ahead and get to the, the meat of this stuff. So as far as the visuals and the, the symmetry, and as far as the sound, how did this look? It looked awesome. Um, there are a lot of creepy panned out scenes where you're seeing the focus on one set image, and it pops back up in a different image. Or you could be seeing the main character or his wife, um, let's play about a girl that was from um, Transference with Johnny Depp. Her name is Rebecca Hall. Uh, she plays the role of Robin, and then uh, Jason Baby plays the role of Simon. And um, there's this character by the name of Gordo, and they come in contact with him. And like whenever he's in the scene, like it's like witnessing Freddy Krueger essentially. Like you don't know when it's gonna come or how he's gonna come, what his motivations are, especially like the slow burn in the first. Nightmare on Elm Street, like, you don't know what's going to kind of come down. And that's kind of how his presence is throughout the imagery of how he's actually filmed. Like, throughout most of the time, you're like, flip, what is going on? Like, there are people in the theaters that are like, oh, crap. Like, that's, that's just how they are generally feeling the whole entire time. And you're on the edge of your seats. You're like, what's going to go down? Oh, crap, I can't believe this. And as soon as you actually feel something, like, they do this awesome thing where... Like I think there was one point in the movie where the main, the, the wife, she was going and you knew she forgot something. You knew she's saying something too much. She's saying way too much. And then it pans out to the other character that she's talking to. And he's just kind of like looking in the facial expressions and the stuff that's going on. They, they capture the facial expressions and the believability of like history and reality. These characters grounded in reality so well. And it's, it has to do with a lot of the cinematography and the way it's shot. Um, even like the sound, the sound is like really ominous and really quiet. When there's a quiet scene in this, it's scary. Like you really feel like this is a horror movie, like anything can go down. And that's, that's the best way of going in this movie. Do not know anything about it. That's why part of the story, I'm not even going to talk to y'all about it other than just the underlying process of it. Uh, I will go into a spoiler review really soon. It's really late. So I'm trying not to go too far with it. But anyway, um, matter of fact, I'm not even going to use synopsis because the synopsis reveals too much. The acting, the acting for this, Jason Bateman, 
Um, even Rebecca Hall, and especially Joe Edgerton. Joe Edgerton, I mean, he already has got that skeevy, like, darkness about him, you know? Like, he, he's a good villain. But, I mean, he's also played the believable, like, good guy. Like, I mean, even the warrior, like, he was a humble, meek, good guy, you know? And I, I really like that about his character. And um, you don't know who this guy is that he's playing. And that's the beauty of the role. Like, you don't know what his backstory is. You find out a little bit about what it could be. And, and it's like, throughout most of the entire movie, you're like watching this guy and you're looking at him in his eyes. And they do a really good job of using those color contexts. Because the color contexts, they throw you off. Because normally his eyes are like really light and vibrant, like these are just like brown and dark and dead and then his hair color is really different. And uh, I don't know if this is coming from an actual book or not, but oh my gosh, he wrote it too. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's, he does an amazing job with it, as well as his directorial and written debut. But Jason Bateman surprised the mess out of me too, because quite honestly, there was never a point that I'm like, this is the rest of the development, dude. This is the guy that was in this movie, or this is the guy that was in, you know, like, I was like, if any of y'all remember the movie The Kingdom, uh, with him and um, Jamie Foxx, he played a serious role in that one and did a good job. That brings it back to those same roots. This might be one of his best acted roles, because there was never a point that I was like, man, this is some funny stuff. Like, I was like, his character is flawed, his character is in love with his wife, but he's put in a situation based on circumstances that spread just, just so deeply. And it's, it's, it's so crazy how it happens. And a lot of the rest of the cast is just really no names. Like, you don't know anybody else in this. I mean, only one I remembered was uh, Busy Phillips. Because she was in, like, I think, uh, Dawson's Creek and a couple other movies, I think White Chicks. She played the role of Duffy. But everybody else, I didn't know who the heck they were. They were the neighbors, essentially, and the people that were the co-workers. But the way that the story treads out, it's like Robin, which is the main character's wife, is played by Rebecca Hall, she does an amazing job. She's more front and center than even Jason Bateman is. I feel bad for her character. Like, it's, it's crazy stuff that goes down, and it's acted to perfection, in my opinion. Like, she did a really good job with this. And to me, circumstantially, like, I don't know what I'll do. So the acting was done really well. And then the story. How do I put it without spoiling it? This is going to be really hard. The movie has the feel of Gone Girl. It has the suspense moments of Disturbia without the cheesiness, without any of the comedy whatsoever. But then, if any of y'all seen the movie called The Hunt, and um, what is his name? Oh my gosh. He plays, um, he plays Hannibal in the TV series. Oh, what is his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Mads. Uh, Mads McKinson. Um, he, his, basically in that movie, you got a rumor that spread it to this young girl. The young girl, she's, she's basically saying that she was basically, something happened to her. And they're blaming him for it. But it's only based on what she says. But because she says it, like that rumor spreads like a cancer and it literally destroys and engulfs this person's life. It really takes root, even though it's a rumor. And that same exact process happens in this movie to this family, like this, this, this husband and his wife, and it revolves around this character, Gordo. And it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's deeper because it's not like a present thing that kind of happens just within the hunt, because it takes place in the past. And the past is something that you can't go back to. You don't have any evidence unless, like, what people say. And if it was never dealt with in the past, then it has root to even damage even more things. And if you haven't dealt with it yourself and forgive yourself for it, it's even worse. And that's that's what you see what's going on with Jason Bateman's character. That's what you see what's going on with Joe o Edgerton's character. Like, it is, it is crazy. It is really crazy how one set thing can cause this damage for this person, but then later on cause damage for this other person. And it's all problematic for everybody around them and who you're meant to be and where are your motivations and your moral compass versus how are you disturbed based on being like put in that situation and what is vengeance how does vengeance weave its way into this that's, that's the dynamics of this that I really like it's like are you justified in taking vengeance upon a person that has wronged you or perpetuated that they have 
And that's where this movie really explores all the deepness of that and the darkness of that. Like, it's so freaking dark, y'all. Um, by the end of the movie, you're probably going to be either disturbed or you're going to be like, wow, that was a freaking awesome story. Like, wow. And what Gordo does and how he does it, and even Jason Bateman's character, like the main character, like, it's not just secrets. It's, it's things that happen. And there are different points where Gordo drops off gifts to the family, and that plays into the title of this movie. And that's the only spoiler that I'm ever going to give, because when you finally see the gift, and I don't know if you might catch it. I caught it. I actually did catch it. But if you do catch it, like, you're going to be like, no, no. Like, that's, that's what you're going to feel. That's what you're going to feel. That's what this movie does so well. And I uh, highly recommend it. It is not for the faint of heart because it is some messed up stuff that does happen. And it's really suspenseful. Like, but don't get me wrong, this is not necessarily a horror film. You're just better off looking at it. I'm not going to tell you anything about the story. Wait for my sports review to know more about that. But if you watch The Hunt, if you watch Gone Girl, fuse those together, make a baby, you got, this is what you got, but just crazier and more deeper. But um, I definitely give this a thumbs up. I give it a 9 out of 10, actually. I, that was one of the better suspense movies I've seen in a long time. Like, it, it didn't get publicized well. Like, I hope it makes more money. But, um, but yeah, this is uh, my non spoiler review for The Gift. And uh, hopefully you go and check that out in your local cinemas really soon, if not next week. And next week actually is going to be The Man from Uncle, so I'm definitely going to be checking that out. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this review. Leave a like below if you actually did. I'm going to leave a link to the trailer of the movie so you can kind of get an understanding of it. If you don't, I'd highly recommend you don't check out the trailer. If you're not that kind of person, just go into it not knowing what's going to go down. And you're going to be in for a ride. This is JVS. We out. Stay tuned for a spoiler review. Later, y'all.